All right, perfect. So we are back with another uh, episode of Biz Minds. And today on the podcast, we have Jason and Lee, the owners of 7J7 Sky Lounge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's get right into it. And how did you guys make your way to the Southwest Florida area? Well, um, we're coming from Oregon. From Oregon. So we, we met in London nine years ago um, with aviators. And, mm-hmm. um, and then we moved to Dundee, where I lived. Mm-hmm. And um, that's how we got into the wine business. Okay. Because we live in wine country, we fell in love with wines mm-hmm. and started this aviation thing that does not exist, something different. And um, her family is here in South Florida. Okay. And we, we came out here during COVID and we're like, wait a minute. We love it. It's nice. Yeah. It's yeah. warm. It's beautiful. And I'm a, I love boating. Mm-hmm. So we bought some property in uh, Marco and uh, decided to make the move about um, five months ago. Oh, wow. And it, you first started, well, you, you have family here. Yes. In Southwest Florida. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. So you were familiar a little bit with the, with the area. Just yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, in Oregon, you got into wine and we've always been into wines we've always loved wine (laughs) but oregon has some amazing wines so we yeah that's where we decided to incorporate our aviation into wines combine the two things that we love i love that so let's yeah tell us a little bit about 7j7 uh the sky lounge the a little bit about the concept and you know um and 7j7 is um was an airplane that born was going to make after the 727, um, and the name of our winery is 7J, is J Wines. So I made it an airplane 7J7. Got it. And it's, all it is is a love of aviation and, and a love of Oregon wines. And most people don't know that Oregon wines are really good. They are one of the best wines and best regions in the world. And the wines have the same latitude, the wineries in Oregon, as in France. So a lot of those clones came from France to start the winery there now, and there's some amazing wine. So what I, my whole attitude was, wow, we need to share this. Most of the wines, 90% of the wines never leave Oregon. They stay there. Wow. And most people don't know anything about Oregon wine. So my whole concept was an aviation-themed wine experience that you cannot find. So all our wines have stories behind them. You go to the grocery store, you'll see bottles of wines everywhere, but um, they really don't say anything. They're kind of quiet, hoping you pick them up. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to share that Oregon Northwest winery experience without having to go to Oregon and give you our passion, which is aviation. So the 7J7 concept, um, we we did wine tasting in Oregon at um, one of the aviation museums for every weekend. So this is just bringing that here and taking the wines out of Oregon and sharing that with uh, folks here in Florida. Yeah, I think it's a great place for this concept, right? Naples. And also, mm-hmm. um, like you said, we just did a tapas night the the other night with uh, with some friends and every course was paired with a wine. Mm-hmm. And a story behind that wine. It was it's wines from Spain, right? Um, and I feel like it just makes you appreciate, you know, the wine because of, because of the story that comes behind it. Mm-hmm. And to your point, when you see them in stores, I think it's so. <clears throat> sometimes it looks so commercialized right. that it's just like, oh yeah, just pick out a wine right. and drink it. And, yeah. But um, at your concept, is there also going to be food or? Yes. Yeah. Yes, We're going to do well. small plates that are paired with our wines as well. Okay. Perfect. The, the thing that's different with us, that everything has a name. Mm-hmm. So even the food is going to have an aviation connotation. Oh, that's something. cool. So it's all about telling that story of bringing aviation and wine together in a funky, cool, updated um, space. So yeah, just you know, bringing people kind yeah. of into our world. Right. See what we do. Learning the terminology of yeah. some of the things that happen on the aircraft, and some of our wines are named after things that happen on the airplane, as well as our foods. So it wow. just kind of gives people a, a little bit of an insight into the the, the word wording and secret things that happen on the aircraft. 
That's super cool. I love that con- the concept. Um, is it, would this be your first business that you are getting into? It's a continuation from Oregon. From Oregon. So we did um, J Wines in Oregon and wine tastings at the museums there and stuff like that. So we've been looking for a place, and then we decided to move here. So we, so all I'm doing is just taking that business and relocating it, but I'm adding a little bit more twists rather than just J Wines. It's going to be Seven J Seven Sky Lounge. Got it, got it. And do you do you have a location? Yes, we do. Oh, you do. It's our First Avenue North. Okay. For forty one. Is it is it theme like aviation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can't oh, miss yeah. it. If you walk by, you see a big airplane. There's an on yeah, the a big yellow airplane hanging <laughs> on the ceiling oh, in really? the space. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And you, the building yeah. itself looks like half of an airplane hangar. Actually, yeah. the whole oh, front really? of it's yeah. glass. Is First Avenue North of forty one. First forty one. Yeah, so like, like she said, it's it looks like it's a hanger, something you would see. Mm-hmm. Um, everywhere you sit is going to be an airplane experience. Our main bar is a 747 cowling from an engine that we converted into a bar. Wow. I have a galley from uh, an airplane. The cocktail tables are converted airplane aviation pieces. That's now furniture. Wow. So every place you go, you're going to have... A really different experience that you can't find. Yeah, that's cool, no? Yeah. Like all the bit, all the the awesome concepts that are coming to Naples, and, ju- and it feels in just the last couple of years, yeah. so many new and innovative concepts coming to to Naples. It's nice, you know, because it's just growing a ton, and <clears throat> I feel like uh, you know the re- people in Naples really appreciate the the the, the different concepts that are coming. Um, now I know you guys haven't opened doors yet, but in previously in Oregon, did you have a brick and mortar or is this, is this your first brick and mortar? This would be our first brick and mortar. We were, we were looking for a space there as well. Okay. Um, but we, it couldn't, um, it never panned out because, mm-hmm. um, the original location was an airplane. Mm-hmm. It was going to be on board an old airplane that was sitting there at the museum. But I couldn't get that to work out. Yeah. It was an old 747, 747. cargo aircraft at the Evergreen <coughs> Aviation Museum in yeah. Oregon, which is where the Spruce Goose right. is housed now. Wow. They wow. moved that from Long Beach up to yeah. that space. So we, so we were doing like tastings on the weekends there. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. so and you fly commercial? Yeah. So my wife and I, we, I'm a captain for American Airlines. I'm a 737 captain, and she's a flight attendant. Both of us 25 years with the airlines. Oh, wow. Um, so... It's just most people don't know what we do as pilots. They come to cockpit, come here, go on the airplane, and they're like, "Oh, there's a pilot, a flight attendant." So we're just taking you a little bit further into that world with our love of aviation and wines. Mm-hmm. Oh, what made you get into um, the aviation industry? Oh gosh, when I was twelve, <laughs> 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 when I took off, I loved the feeling of the speed and taking off and I'm like that's what I want to do mm-hmm. so I became a flight attendant when I was in my 20s and um, worked for a commuter airline in the west coast of California and now been with American Airlines for 25 years and I love it oh, I do wow. <laughs> and for you well you know I'm, I was just a little kid from Trinidad in the Caribbean and that was it. I we flew from Port of Spain to JFK on Pan Am, and I was instantaneously hooked. I want to be a pilot, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't believe I get to fly airplanes around the world. Wow. They pay me to do that. Was there anybody in either of your families that was in this industry before? No, not that no. I know of. No. Nope. I'm the only aviator in my family. My dad loved airplanes. Yeah. And wanted to buy an ultralight, but that's probably <laughs> the closest we got to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, uh, this is, I wish I had someone in my family mm-hmm. that could kind of follow a little bit, but um, so I had to kind of make my own way, figure it out. Mm-hmm. That's why military, I flew Blackhawks in the military. I flew corporate for Coca Cola. I did charter work out of Atlanta. Wow. And, and now American Airlines, uh, 25 years. Oh, wow. And I flew huh? all the airplanes they've had. With um with all the technology that we have now, how much does a is a pilot involved in the whole? Oh, 
I get a lot of that question a lot. People think the airplane is fully automated, mm -hmm. and it is and not at the same time. Um, for instance, I fly 737, so when the weather gets really bad, you guys go outside and see fog, mm -hmm. right? In that airplane, when we land, we call it we call it category three approach. I can go all the way down to 300 meters, which is not a lot at all. And I have to see something at 50 feet, at 180 miles an hour, I have to make a decision mm -hmm. at 50 feet to land. That's all hand flown. All the other airplanes, we call an auto land, those airplanes can't fly like we fly in 7-3. It's all, all three autopilots are on and they, they are able to do auto landing. Oh yeah? Yes. So the automation is designed to relieve fatigue. Mm -hmm. If I hold the airplane like this, you know, at altitude 37,000 feet for nine hours, I would be exhausted. Right. So a lot of the automation comes in to relieve fatigue. So we, as we take off, we get airplane straight and level, uh, autopilot's on for cruise, climb, descent, until we get to whatever we think, turn everything off and land the airplane. Mm -hmm. So we land the airplane all the time um, without, without the automation. The only time it's mandatory is during bad visibility. Mm -hmm. Do you have any scares, uh, stories? <laughs> In 25 years, you know, that's what <laughs> Yeah, I just have one uh, probably before I met you, so probably, probably like 10 years ago, just some severe turbulence that lasted for 45 solid minutes and the wow. plane was falling and twisting and people were screaming and wow. I was scared to death, scared, the whole crew was. People that yeah. were flight attendants and pilots were our passengers and they were even in tears. It was really? very scary. It was on a 737 actually. So wow. in one sense, I, I learned the strength of an aircraft during that. We were being hit from the side um, with the 150 mile an hour winds. It was after some bad storm on this coast, on the East Coast. So other than that, I've had smooth sailing, <laughs> smooth flying. Yeah. <laughs> it's always but something. that's it. Always nothing, something. Nothing more <laughs> it's always something. But um, I've learned as I've got more experience, I just take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. What's going on? The airplane's bouncing around. Okay. I right. still have a little bit of PTSD. <laughs> yeah, I need to slow ago. down. Yes. Or I guess today was yesterday we were coming in from Antigua, taking it from New York. I'm sorry, going to Antigua, just climbing out, and the flight attendants call. We have a medical emergency. Somebody collapsed. Oh, so um, these guys deal with a lot of mer medical emergencies. Mm -hmm. um, we do. There's always something going on. Yeah. And, and thank God there's always a doctor on the yeah. plane. And it was a, it was a, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, there's really? always a doctor or a nurse. Like, yeah. we have to page, yeah. and there's, they ha they, God. There has to be? No, no, no it just no, happens no. to they always be. To be. Yeah, yeah, I fly in wide bodies um, to Europe a lot, so there's so many passengers, and there's bound to be a doctor. Oh, okay. So that helps us. But we are, we are highly trained in yeah. all medical situations. Is there well. is there anything, uh, like, this? Does every plane have uh, a police officer on the plane? No, no, no. We we did the um, what do you call them again? Um, air marshal. The air marshal thing air marshal. right after nine eleven, and we still have them. I had them the other day. But um, it's can't not... tell you what flight or I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's random, randomly. Yeah, it's random. It's random, yeah. And and what they think they should be on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we do have. That, those, but it's not like a mandatory someone's on board. Got it. Now, actually, a question that I uh, would love to ask you, yeah, both. Yeah, we, I think I, we I've got some. Questions. Yeah, I've got some questions. Now <laughs> Everybody that, has questions. Yeah, yeah, now that we're uh, on on this, uh, why do fl uh, planes <clears throat> have to? Fl why can't why can't you fly direct to some places? We do. You do. Yeah. How come you have to fly? Like, if we want to go to. Where is it? Is it California? Uh, I don't, like certain flights, they have to land somewhere or make make a no. You can like, fly like, direct anywhere. That's just marketing. That's yeah. just really. That's just stopping picking up people. Really, that's a scheduling thing. Yeah, no, you talking about? We don't stuff. have to land. No, they like, just you can fly pick up passengers. direct oh, anywhere. Okay. There are oh, nonstop flights. Only yeah. passenger yeah. airplane. But anywhere in the world? Any only pants in the airplane. Well, it depends on where you're going yeah. and what airline you're yeah. flying on. Yeah. So, okay. So That's just let, their routing. Let's say the plane can take you yes. anywhere. Right. Uh, you don't have to make a stop somewhere to go to another no. so country or city? Who does that is Southwest. Southwest, yeah. So, let's say you're in L.A. 
and you're trying to get to Fort Myers, you'll stop five times. <laughs> Really? But that's their marketing. That's their, that's that has their just to do with picking up passengers yeah. and so it has nothing. They don't, to do it has with nothing to do with the length of time. No. Okay. It's just a matter of your routing. So that's their model. That's their business yeah. model. American Airlines and most other major airlines, we have hub system. So we have bases. LA is a hub. Dallas is a hub. Washington D.C. Miami hub. So you'll fly to a hub, or you'll do a transcon. From LA all the way to Miami. You'll just pay more. <laughs> right? And we, your choice. Some people like to stop. Mm -hmm. Some people buy a ticket base cheaper because it stops. Right? Um, so, but Southwest business model is multiple stops. Okay, I got one. It came to my mind. So if you if you if we want to go to Hawaii, huh? how come you have to stop in California? Because you can't from here? Yes. Because yeah. there's no airplane large enough that operates from Fort Myers that have the range cap capability to fly all the way. What about Hawaii. Miami? We don't have any airline that does that. Really? We don't? We no. don't have any? There's nobody that does nonstop? No one does Miami, Not even Hawaii, Honolulu. So you can't go directly? You can. It just depends on how big the we aircraft just, is and how much fuel you have. Right. So the earth isn't flat. Don't even get him started on this. Don't get him started on this. No, but, but, but like, we have the airplanes <laughs> in Miami. We just don't have that. We call it city pairs, right? We don't have Miami Honolulu. Now we have New York Honolulu. We okay. have Dallas Honolulu. Yeah, you can fly it. Right. It just you, depends on how large the aircraft okay. is and how much fuel so you have. So you could. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. But there's just no plane that We does. don't have that. No, we does. Oh, it does. Yeah, we do. It's, yeah, we do. it's okay. a it's 787 or 787. We yeah. just don't have that business. We that's not our, it. yeah. We don't got have it. to. There's no need to oh, stop. Oh, got it. Okay. Unless that's your schedule. Okay, got it. You got know, it. everything's scheduled. So you could take a private jet from here to Hawaii? It all depends on oh, the size. Depends on the size. how big your jet is. Yeah. yeah. How big is your jet? <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> so the airplane is the airplane <laughs> capacity dictates the range and fuel. Mm -hmm. So we have triple sevens and seven eights could fly from Miami, yeah, all the way to Asia. Yeah, I used to fly wow. uh, on the seven eight seven from L.A. to Hong Kong. That was a sixteen hour yeah. flight. Yeah, I had to ask you guys because I can't, I sometimes I see that trending online. Like, oh, why do you have to stop Price. here? To, you know? and Yeah, we, we see it all the time. There's another one that they say, I mean, there's no one better than you guys to tell us, okay, no, it's not like that. But, but we don't have a pilot next to us <laughs> all the time when we see content. Um, there's one that they say that if the earth is round, how come... When you fly from here to Europe, and you did, you tell me if I'm that's what I fly. Okay, um, how come the airplane doesn't adjust? Like, sh because if he goes oh, straight, it will go straight to, I to totally space. Understand. I understand that. That's the um, the 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 theory for curvature. Yes, every mile, mm -hmm. it the, the earth drops eight inches. Square, it does drop. Right. That's the curvature formula. Mm -hmm. So the question is, when we're at 37,000 feet, is the airplane correcting? Right. Right? Is it? And it's not. It's not? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> this is a whole different subject. And the reason subject. why, trust me, <laughs> totally I, I, we, had the, we had these conversations all the time in, uh, in the cockpit. Wow. And the reason why I say that. That's very is, interesting. Um, a Cessna has no computers on board. And I learned to find a Cessna 152, and it's, and it's all gyroscopic and a head in directional compass, right? So if I get it 3,000 feet, it's going to stay at 3,000 feet. And I can fly if I have enough gas, right? Um, and stay at 3,000 feet, and it has no computers to compensate for curvature. So explain wait, that. Wait a uh, minute. I, I have to make sure that this is recording. <laughs> I'm not doing this over again. <laughs> no, because I see this all the time, and I'm like, you know what? And I have a, actually a pilot, one pilot in the family, but I never asked him this question. Oh, um, yeah, we have Sergio, too. How does that moment of gravity play into curvature? Gravity, again, I have this discussion all the time. The theory of gravity is not a 
um, what do you call it? Proven. It's still a theory. Still a theory? Yeah. So, and why do I say that? Because this is a conversation we have all the time. I have all these, all these conversations about stuff like that because it makes you think. It's not yeah. about, it's not about right or wrong. It's what the truth is. Right. Um, the deepest hole we've ever dug is eight miles in Russia. But we, we teach that there's this molten core. Well, how do we know that? We haven't been there, right? Um, gravity is a theory. It's not taught as, it, we, we teach it like it's a fact, but it's, it's still a theory of gravity, relativity to uh, some kind of mass pulling something to the center of it. So we teach it as fact, but it's still a theory. It's not a law. We have laws and we have theories, mm -hmm. right? Um, so there's a lot of laws we have that we know for a fact is, is you can test and you can measure it, but gravity is still really a theory. Man, I and love it doesn't really it. affect aviation in the sense of gravity pulls the airplane out. So when I pull yeah, the engines, lifting. when I pull the airplane back to uh, engines back to idle, the airplane is going to naturally want to come down, right? Because it's not producing um, thrust to maintain that altitude. As soon as I pull the power back, it's going to come down. Right. So what's pulling it down? That's the question. Gravity. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so laws are different in theory. It's just, and it's, you gotta, you got to remember what a law is. Right. Mm -hmm. like so the law, the, sec, the, the law of thermodynamics, law of therm, that means things degrade in time. We can see that when we leave a banana out, right? It breaks down in time. That's a law. We can measure. We can see it. Um, so a lot of things in aviation, like you guys talk about, we don't correct. The airplane does not have a computer or algorithmic formula that says we correct every time we fly. So you do agree that if you don't correct, you will go up? So if, there's, if the Earth is curved, right, there's a lot of things you should be able to do and see. You should be able to see things far away beyond where the, where the, eye, where the, where the sky and the horizon comes together, that focal point. We only can see certain certain distance, but we can see beyond certain things because of the distance, right, of the curvature. So something is not right. What I see is still flat at 40,000 feet. How, how, how long in total you've been flying? 38 years. Wow. Do you think the Earth is round? Well, like I flat? said, <laughs> that's... <laughs> That's one of those com that's one of those conversations. Tricky one. That, but, you, but it's interesting. It's so interesting. It's well because I, it's not what what we told, yeah. what we were taught. Mm -hmm. It's curved, round mm -hmm. ball, right? What you see is different. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really interesting. And that's what you have to look into stuff like this. Is what am I what am I looking at? What? Compared to what I was told, mm -hmm. and yeah. then ask yourself a question. Yeah, we question a lot of things. <laughs> Personally, yeah, I think it's just like this. Yeah, because okay, I don't yeah. see. Because I know what I know. Right. I, I'm in an extreme world of an aviation. It's extreme. I'm in a desert. Yeah. Minus fifty something degrees outside. It's it's weather. It's all kind of craziness up there, and I have to understand what I'm looking at. I've been all over the world. You know, and another thing that will blow your mind, if you really want to look at this, compass. Compass? <laughs> Why? And you, you, you can remember that. Cause... When you get beyond the equator, okay. um, is there a south pole that the compass points to? It's, magnet, it's supposed to be magnet poles, right? North and south magnetized. Mm -hmm. But when below the south pole, guess where the compass points? North. When you're supposedly going south? I'm beyond. I've been all the way down to... to um, past the equator. Past the equator, all the way down to Santiago, Chile. That's really Ant far. Almost south. on top. On tar on tar almost. Tar close to it. Right? Really far. And if the Earth is curved, right? And then this is the equator. I'm on this side now, right here. My compass should not be able to pick up that north magnetic pole. It should go south, right? And it doesn't. So what's your... That's what I'm saying. It's, it's things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so so when, 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 um, when you're flying and you say to yourself, if I keep going, 
what if I decided I to keep going, yeah, where, where would where I be going? End, where do you end up? Right. Yeah. Well, that's another discussion. That's my question. That's another discussion. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think the ice walls of Antarctica is the end. Those, are, those things are a couple of miles high. Yeah. They keep the oceans in. Mm -hmm. And if you continue, we don't know what you run into, but a lot of people believe that in the flat earth theory concept, the end is the Antarctica. And the reason why they believe that is the only um, treaty that's been ongoing that no one has violated since 1947 when it started, whatever they did it. Why? 50s and 50s. Mm. Why would they, all the countries agreed to never ever um, violate that and no one can go there without permission. Even what's funny is that even the countries that are not friends they agree. They follow it. Yeah. So, so it's, you know. It makes you question, not, yeah. why? Why yeah. can I go down? It's only ice, right? Uh -huh. So what's the big deal? <laughs> Something else is going on. What do you think? <laughs> you like it. to drink wine? <laughs> <laughs> 15 years old. It's, it's just one of those things to make, I think, about because I see things from a different perspective. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm at altitude. I see even even if we um, even if we didn't believe what you're saying, mm -hmm. we can't even like yeah, we can have an opinion, right? But it's not very, it's not a valid opinion because we're not up there, and, and it's in front of you. A lot of things is right in front of your eyes. That, yeah, to make yeah. you question, um, it's called sea level. It's called flight level, not flight curve or sea curve. When you see a um, rainbow, rainbow mm -hmm. is always what shape? Curve. Why? Because how the properties of a rainbow is reflecting the lights coming from above. That's why it's curved. If you, could, if you could create a rainbow in a square box, it would be flat. The properties of how light is created. So doesn't that just prove the Earth is it round? Proves the earth, <laughs> it proves no. It proves the light's coming from above to create the curvature. Yes. So it says something else is going on right in front of us. Sea level, flight level. When you um, at sunrise and sunset, when I watch the sun come up behind a cloud, mm -hmm. I get angles. Get angles called a sunburst, right? Mm -hmm. Cannot have a sunburst with angles if the moon, if the sun is ninety-three million miles. It would be all parallel light with no angles, right? <laughs> yeah, and I have I, I have another one for you. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. We have to sh shift gears a little bit. No, I need, I need I need one. This one, <laughs> this one answer. <laughs> one more, one more. Okay. Um, and we didn't think we were going to, you know, go That's this fine. way, but, it's but fine. Yeah, I think it's, it's fun conversation. conversation. Absolutely. Um, we never got, we never got to, to the stars, right? We mean the stars. Like we never, like, what's the star? Talk about the sun is considered a star, right? That's okay. So when, when, when we see at night and we see a whole bunch right. of stars, right. what, what are they? That's a dumb conversation. Also. Okay. No, no. And the reason I'm asking what you, were, what, you were, what you were taught, remember what you were taught. Uh -huh. You have to question that. Yeah. And that's all I tell people to do is question what you see. Yeah. Okay? Um, stars I, could be I, galaxies. It could be an actual star like our sun or something else. Yeah. And I can tell you why I'm, I'm, I'm having this question because they say that we've never been, like we never reached the stars, right? We haven't been to the we've star never, ever. Okay. But we can see the stars, right. but we can't see a planet. You can. You, you see planets. From here? Yes, we see Mars all the time. You see Venus every morning. Yeah, like right. Like every red. morning. The morning star. Yeah, but you, but you can see. Mercury. You can see a star the same size of a planet. And Are stars all, the same it size? It almost, it almost looks like the same size. So, like I said, some of the, some of the stars that, um, that NASA tells us are galaxies that are so big and so far away that it look like a star. The question you should ask yourself is See? when you look up, the stars are moving, right? The yeah. whole sky moves. Yeah. 
right? And, but why? The constellation remains the same. It never changes. The what? Constellations. Like <laughs> the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Orion. Those never move. They never change. But we're supposed to be moving really fast. <laughs> this no. is, it's a great conversation. We can have over wine. <laughs> but we do have to shift gears a little oh, bit. So, <laughs> okay, okay, so now that we figured that out, are you guys? Nothing. You guys are going into business, right? Are you? How are you feeling going into this brick and mortar business? Are you feeling, you know, uh, nervous, uh, excited, scared? Where Where is your thought process be go before going into this? Because now you're going to have employees, right? You're right. going to be servicing right. people in your establishment, right. Right. Uh, building, you know, the name, so on and so forth. So many things that come with opening up one business. Where is your mind? Where's your Where's your minds at before launching this business? Well, I'm um, a little nervous. Of course, it's to have a staff. Normal, mm -hmm. uh, the, that nervousness, that anxiousness. I get up about three o'clock, three thirty, four o'clock in the morning every day because mm -hmm. my mind is thinking wow. about, and and I get downloaded ideas and stuff. It happens all the time. Oh, that's a great idea! I'm gonna do this. Um, the logo, that's everything, you know, I think about those kind of things. I want us to be successful, mm -hmm. you know, and this is going to be, you know, our business. And we want to, sh to have a, a wonderful vision for what we think it's going to be. But in reality, what is it really going to look like having employees? How is the business model going to run when people walk in? How, what, what kind of product are we going to provide? And in uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, we know what we want. Right. We know the service we want to provide. Being in hotels and the, in the service industry, we definitely want people to come in and feel like people, mm -hmm. pe mm -hmm. that we appreciate them and we want to give them really great service and really great food. And we have amazing wines. Our winemaker is incredible. So we have a love for that because that's our world. You know, so we both have dabbled in management-ish. You know, I had a short-term vacation rental, so I had a couple employees. And um, so we both feel confident. We have some a little bit of experience. We've done the wine tasting. We kind of know how to run things. Um, we just have faith in ourselves, and we know that we can – we know that we have some enough experience to do it, and we just – we want to do it. And I put a lot of effort. It's a lot of work mm -hmm. into this. He has designed everything from the ground up. Mm -hmm. so, so the work will pay off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a matter of um, the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that we get that here pretty soon. We finish up the last of the permits. And I know what we're going to provide. <clears throat> Plus, we're going to be there. It's not like we're not going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be leaving the 737 and going to a 787. Mm -hmm. And my flying is going to be mostly Europe, but I'm only going to work once or twice a month, so three to six days. So we can oh, both be here. So I could be at the wine yeah. full time. Yeah. Wow. How big is going to be the team when you first start? Or is just because you're both not going to Good question. Be <laughs> I think about five to six yeah. employees mm -hmm. and us. Okay. Yeah. How big is the place? It's quite about uh, 1,500 square feet. 1,500. 1,500 square feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And. Are you guys, <clears throat> I think, I think opening up a business when you are um, experienced, like in, in you know, uh, as opposed to really early on when you have that inexperience, I think you're at an advantage, to be honest, so. uh, just because, you know, you have more, I'd say, like more life experience just mm -hmm. overall, right? right? Sometimes it's very hard to. And there's so many unforeseen unfor hurdles when you open up a business, like the things that you never think about. Right. Right. Show up. It just yeah. yeah. And it just becomes a I think a game of and we talk about this uh, my brother and I all the time that you just become um, like whoever puts out fires the the best and the the fastest really is the, yeah the the <laughs> the people and I think the the companies that win. Ultimately, because there's only, there's always fires to put out, mm -hmm. and that's what we excel at. Because mm -hmm. in our daily life, that's my job. Always, <laughs> I'm much. not a pilot; I'm a fireman. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm That's always good. putting a fire out. I'm always got to deal with a passenger or a crew right. member or a maintenance issue. I'm constantly solving problems and we're uh-huh. really good at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is just going to be an extension of that experience. We have 50 years of aviation together. Mm-hmm. At least. And um, <laughs> we, we will bring that problem solving skills and ability and service to 7J7. I love it. Yeah. And we also love music too. So yes. we're always Oh have, yeah. So we're gonna have we music. wanna have entertainers, we wanna yes. have yeah. great music yes. and are you thinking that. about opening late or where Maybe. are you with the Oh yeah. Well that's that's uh, times. Yeah. That's gonna be based on um, what we see. Right. Okay. You know, and clientele. Because yeah. you know, I would love to have a younger um, demographic mm-hmm. show up. Mm-hmm. And, and get involved with the wines and wine tasting. I'm thinking about putting a piano in, a little baby piano, because we love music. Mm-hmm. And it'd be fun to have a vibe He like plays that. drums. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I agree 100%. I think that everybody, especially in um, client uh, consumers with businesses like the model that you're going into, I feel like everything is about the service, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the atmosphere, Yep. And of course, the product mm-hmm. that you're selling. Right. But I almost feel like I, a lot of people would rather go to a place, even if the product isn't the best, they're getting the best service. That's how I feel. And they're in the best atmosphere. atmosphere. Yeah, I always um, say that. Because sometimes uh, there's nothing worse, especially in the food industry, where uh, it might be the place may be really good. But Hard you don't service. know how. Yeah, you don't know yes. if you're going to get a good service today. Mm-hmm. If the employee is going to be mad, happy. That's really important to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and that's my approach for, for the business model is from the minute you walk in, the first thing we're going to do is give you a taste. Yeah, of you're wine. a guest of ours. Mm-hmm. Get an automatic taste of our champagne or maybe a Pinot Gris or the rose automatically. Mm-hmm. Then we seat you. And then we start with that one-on-one. It's a one-on-one service. So you, we're not going to have eight flights in front of you in a piece of paper telling you what each wine represents. No. It's one-on-one. We're going to tell you, okay, this is the, our Chardonnay 2013 Chardonnay. We named it um, not flying or whatever. And we go into that one-on-one mm-hmm. experience. And rather than just you on your own, hope it works out. Right, right, right. I don't like that business model. So our, our approach is personal relationship, experience, and really take time with you. Like a private jet, yes. like a private flight. Mm-hmm. That's, That's what this is about. Yeah. Now would the you, concept. Would you, would you ever fly a uh, private? I did. You, the Coca-Cola. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Have, like, have your own plane or no? Oh, me, for me, if I wanted my own airplane? Yeah. I don't That's really cool. want my own airplane. <laughs> um, we want a yacht. I want a boat. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we want a cruise run at six knots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I have here some rapid fire questions. Sure. These are just fun, random questions that I'd like to get uh, both of your opinion on. So I, I'll ask one question. Sure. You'll both answer. Um, and so we'll get right into it. Uh, what digital or software tools do you use daily to make your life easier? iPad and iPhone. My phone, for sure. Yeah. So it leads my me into my whole schedule is on my phone. <laughs> Everything is on my phone. Yeah. Leads me into my next question: iPhone or Android? iPhone. iPhone. If you can only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh, eat. Oh gosh, that's tough. His food. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Because I love cooking, and to find one thing to eat Pay-low. every day. No. <laughs> I don't know what. I wouldn't even yeah. Gosh. That's okay. That, that I'm a, I would say I love a really good Italian meatball. Yeah. Italian meatball? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can eat that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he cooks is what I can eat every day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer winter or summer? Summer. Summer. What is your favorite holiday? Christmas. Christmas. Do you prefer to relax at the beach or pool? Pool. I would We're not beach, beach people. Yeah, but we don't like hanging out at the I beach like to walk, too long. Walk, we yeah. don't like to sit at the yeah. beach. We like to walk, we'll walk on the beach, the beach. Yeah, and I then go home and sit at our pool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fifth Ave or Mercado? 
I really don't know too it, much about Mikado. I like Fifth Avenue better. <laughs> you know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it really is. I, yeah. We've been, been a couple of times, yeah. but it's in the daytime. We haven't done it at nighttime to see what it's like. Got it. Yeah. Got it. It's I cool. like I like Fifth Avenue better. It's cool. Is it? Yeah. It's a it's a different. It's a different. I like the they're, different they're, they're different. Yeah. They're yeah. very yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you can only work two hours a week, what would you do in those two hours? A new concept. <laughs> I love. We love doing wine tasting. Yeah. Wine tasting is fun as a job. Yeah. yeah, I would do that as a job. Yeah. <laughs> Be fabulous. Uh, a book you'd recommend to read? A book. I have uh, one. One. Mm-hmm. Gosh. My rich. I think it's Richard Bach. It's one of my favorite books. It's nope, aviation. No I, actually, okay aviation. To. Yeah, I, I'm trying to. I've got so many books. I'm trying yeah. to recommend. All depends on the subject. Business. People. Psychology. No. Um, See, I love. I, I like so. Lee Strobel's work. Lee. Str- okay. If you can have lunch with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Come lunch, or it would be God. God? Oh, yeah. I want to sit down with God and God. Okay, we got some questions. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to have tea with, what's the singer's name that just passed away? Tom Petty. Tom Petty? I'd love to hang out with him. What's your favorite restaurant in Naples? We haven't eaten out. We've, too we've been much. trying to go to <laughs> as, as much as possible. We could get that yeah. vibe. But so far, it's Del Mar. Del Mar? Yeah. Del Mar's a good one. Yeah, yeah, they had really good food. Yeah. yeah. Del Mar's a good one. When you think of the word successful, who comes to mind? Successful. Anyone who's happy, really, to me. Yeah, and that's can pay a, their that's bills. Success, <laughs> to me, success is not necessarily financial. Yeah. It's um, achieving goals, setting goals. It's it's um, spiritual, physical, mm-hmm. monetarily, um, family is a lot tied up in success. And mm-hmm. we keep thinking success is a W two, and it's not. I, I know a lot of successful people that is not rich. Mm-hmm. I agree. I love that. If you can choose any other career path, what would it be? Pilot, chef. <laughs> What's been your What's been your best investment? My wife. Oh, my son and my husband. What's a bad piece of advice you've heard people telling others? Get a job. Oh Lord! You don't want a job. Um, most people have a job, and they never live their full potential um, and pursue their passion, their heart. Dreams do come true. I am a living testimony of that. And I hear a lot of people say, go to school and study really hard to get a job. Yeah, I would say going to college. Go mm. to college. Mm. If you don't know what you want to do, don't go to college. Yeah. I love that money. you're saying that about you, like your testimony of, you know, what he asked. Uh, and I have another question after that. I got one, too. Yeah. Yeah, you, you shoot. <laughs> um does does money buy happiness no. and and i would love i would love for you to take oh i love at this. least <laughs> at two least five seconds to think about what i'm asking two different answers i already know <clears throat> no two different answers. yes it can i love it can, that. It can help with your happiness it's okay tool, that's for sure tool yeah but the reason why i say that the greatest time you're happiest is always when you give not yes. when you buy something. Wow. So when you that, stop on, yeah. when you stop on the street and you see a homeless person, what are we given? And you they starve and you buy them a meal. But if you don't have right? money, you can't do How that. How can you give something that you don't have? Well, exactly. no. What I'm saying, not I'm talking about, I'm talking about happiness, mm-hmm. yes. not stuff. Mm-hmm. So you mean? But emotions. money helps to buy happiness. If you're giving money to people to help people, right. that's happiness. So it, it's. It's we, really a two-sided question. We, I mean, you can come at it from several different ways. I think that it makes me happier. Yeah, to be able to pay my bills. And the reason why I say that, I'm, I do a lot. Of, I did a lot of motivational speaking in high school, mm-hmm. kids and stuff like that. And I get this question all the time. Yeah, and I tell them, "Have you, you ever been in a new car? Like, yes. What does a new car smell like? A new car. How long does a new car smell last? 
right? Maybe a month. Same thing with money. Today, I make a million dollars. Oh, smells great. But six months, I'm going to want 1.5 million. And the next six months, I'm going to want 2 million, and 2.5, and 3.5, and 10 million, and 20 million. It never stops. Because there's never a number that you're going to reach and say, okay, I'm happy now. It's so if you follow your heart and follow your passion, right? I love flying airplanes. I do it at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. It's not about how much money I make, it's I'm doing something I love. And money can't buy that. Would you do, would you, uh, would you be a pilot if, can you, can you double check if those are still running? Yep. Yeah, the one was flashing. That's good. Such a cool setup. <laughs> Thank really you. Is. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Would I love this topic? So, yeah. So, would would you be a pilot if it paid thirty grand and, uh, yeah, and a year? And the old saying for pilots, we would say, "I, I would fly for free." Fly for free? Mm. We really? said it a thousand times. Oh yeah, a lot of guys love aviation that much that we would fly for free. I don't know. But we realize that pilot being a pilot is a business. Mm -hmm. So you don't hear that anymore. Right. But when I was growing up as a pilot, you hit all oh, five for free. I think, I think we will all do the things that we love for free, but we have to put in consideration right. where we're, where, that we're on planet Earth. And in the sense of um, we can't, we, it's hard to give when. So I, I always say that sometimes when someone poor gives to another poor, it just creates more, more poverty. And I believe that you have to grow in every aspect in life in order to be able to give, mm -hmm. right? So it, it we love this question because it just... Uh, unfolds in different ways. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so many layers to it. And I think, not to, sorry yeah. to cut you off, but uh, I think that the reason why we ask it now a lot is uh, on the podcast is because I've always heard, I'm, I'm 26, but I've, I've always heard that ever since I've been little, like money doesn't buy happiness. I've always heard that. Uh, my, my parents, my family, shows, movies, commercials, a million different things. I've always heard that saying. And sometimes, <clears throat> and we just had this conversation for like hours with our brother-in-law who just, uh, he's an orthopedic surgeon here in Naples. Right. And uh, he's in his first year. And we had a deep conversation about this because I think the, like the, the instinct thing to say always is no. Mm-hmm with that question sometimes and almost like people are i don't want to say and i'm not referring to you i'm just saying yeah. in general uh, like almost like it sounds wrong to say yes mm -hmm. you know but if but you can do so so many experience all these experiences especially heightened mm -hmm. experiences cost money um I'm not saying every experience does, right. but if you, you know, w one thing that trends a lot and is very uh, trendy is, you know, I, if I make it, I'm going to buy my family, my right, mom right. a home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's the material thing. I think it's the, the act of it. Yes, the mm -hmm. act. Yep. The gift. That's what I'm talking That's, about. Yeah, exactly. It's so if you, you can't give if you don't yeah. have money. So it's the given It part. is important. Mm -hmm. and, and, and giving comes... In so many ways, yeah. Mm -hmm. Parent to a child, mm -hmm. money transacted at all. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of giving. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the what really makes you happy is doing something for someone else. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I what, that's in my life. Yep, mm -hmm. and it's, it it doesn't matter how much it costs. Mm -hmm. It's doing something. Thank you so much. Let me give you guys an example. I'm in D.C. Well, three hours late. The flight was supposed to leave. Um, four hours ago, and these people are upset. They're trying to get to Orlando for a flight. My flight tenants are going to go illegal. So we have 
to the hours that we could fly maximum days, maximum hours a day. And they are coming up on that 45 minutes before they go illegal. Right? It doesn't mean they can't fly. It says that legally cannot be on duty for so, so many hours, right? Mm -hmm. We just landed. The airplane we have just broke. So I, I said, okay, guys, I called right away to get another airplane. We got another airplane. It's across the other side of the terminal. We walked over there, and all these passengers are looking at us. Here comes the crew. The management knows that we're going to go illegal. My flight is going to go illegal in 45 minutes. So I said, guys, we're going to do everything we can to help these people out. Right? If we wanted to, we could just drag our feet, take our time, and by the time we get to the airplane, go illegal. So I'm looking at all these people with kids that's going to Disneyland that's trying to do something with their children on vacation or whatever. So I came back up and I made a PA to the passengers. I said, listen, I need you guys' help. My flight attendants are going to go illegal in 45 minutes. I need you guys to be on this airplane, seated and ready to go in 30 minutes. Can you do it? And everybody's <laughs> like, yes, we can, Captain. <laughs> I told the manager, I said, we got to do everything we can. We have to get on this airplane. Otherwise, we're done. So we lined all the passengers up down the jet bridge. Everybody was ready to go. And boom, we pulled the trigger. And we got done in 30 minutes. Got everybody on board. Um, doors closed, ready to go. Even the, the management stood out in front of the airplane and gave us a salute because we worked together as a team. We gave them something that we didn't have to do. And when we landed in Orlando, I got so many people that said, thank you so much, Captain, for saving our vacation or saving this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's worth how much? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can't put monetary value on that. Mm -hmm. um, money is a tool to facilitate in doing things and buying things for your family and your friends and vacation, that sports car, whatever. But at the end of the day, is doing something for someone else. Mm -hmm. And they could and they could be and they could be um, in two different categories, yeah. right? In Absolutely. The sense of like if we rewarded that question and said, does um, giving, right, right, mm -hmm. because we said does money buy happiness? But the reason why why <clears throat> we asked asked it like that it's because we think that as soon as you add money to a conversation, mm -hmm. it triggers many different answers mm -hmm. because it's automatically thought as let me put this first before anything right. else. Uh, and we um, we're fully believers that nothing ca comes before family, uh -huh. right? But then once you master certain things in life, mm -hmm. then you just grab a tool and play with it mm -hmm. and keep maximizing who you are, right? So that's why we asked that question. And the issue is the love of money. Yeah. yeah. So if you, are you in love? Yeah. Yeah. It, it goes to back it. to the Bible. Oh, you love money. money. Yeah. 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 And that's what it really comes down to, as you said. Uh, is, do I think of, I'm in love with money? I go to New York City. Is money your God? Yeah. Is that the only thing that's driving you yeah. to be happy? I'm doing I'm, all my sacrifice and everything I'm doing. So, uh -huh. so she doesn't have to fly. So she could, we, we could be free of money. Mm -hmm. So we never have to ask for how much that costs. That's mm -hmm. why I want to go. Yeah. Free. Mm -hmm. So uh, money does not control my choices. I can oh, just get three of those. Mm -hmm. Not the question. That's why I want to go. I want to be free of money. Right, right. I love I love that you um you're a smart man. Like I can see it. And because you question things and we like to question things a lot too. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to be free from money. You need money. I have to have exactly. plenty of it where exactly. I don't have to. And I, I make really good That's money That's what per my hour. point was. <laughs> so I, I'm coming from money. Yeah. So, so I know it's great to have it, mm -hmm. but it's not the end all. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Perfect. Yeah. Love the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything that you guys would like to leave and maybe like mention that we didn't touch on or 
I don't know, advice or anything at all that we maybe didn't cover? I don't think so. We, we just uh, want you guys to come and down. What we oh, have. absolutely. Come and share <laughs> in 7J7. Um, if you like wines, we can also have a couple of microbreweries as well. Uh, we we also going to, my goal is to do um, local events. Also do things with other wine with other restaurants. We did, we did we do um, what we call wines in flight dinner experiences. We bring our wines with the restaurant and have another evening where we talk about the wines, talk about the food. Just come on down and have a good time. And um, we want to hear your stories. So that's <laughs> yeah, why exactly. um, we're going to have a happy hour where we call it hangar time, where you come down and just you know just talk about whatever mm-hmm. and just with us and have a glass of wine and have some food. Yeah, love that. Yeah, I just want people to know that we're passionate about what we're doing. We're working really hard to get it up and running mm-hmm. with a little adversity right now yep. with the city. But um, we want everyone to come in and enjoy everything that we, that my husband has created. Really, he's the creative force behind everything. I've done all the tasting, so I've picked all the wines. <laughs> They're fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so we just want everyone to come and have a good time and have great customer service and yep. just walk out, you know, maybe found a new knowledge of wine and aviation. Yeah. Love it. Thank you both so much. It's a pleasure.